This conference will now be recorded. Hello. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Uh, good morning. Yeah. So how long it's going to take to everyone join? Okay. 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 Hello. Hello. Yeah, how long is others going to take? others going to take? Just yeah, three minutes. Uh, uh, some more people is going to join. Okay, okay, sure, no problem. Okay, sure, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Lalit. Hello. So, Lalit, uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. 
परफेक्ट परफेक्ट ठीक है सो लेट एवरीबडी ज्वाइन एंड देन यू कैन स्टार्ट This conference will now be recorded. Hi Lalit, uh, we'll start now. Hi, okay. All right, so in our last session, we have seen a lot of services like we have seen basics of the cloud computing, then we have seen what is exactly AWS because uh, before we start uh, working on the AWS, before we design our infrastructure on the AWS, we must know what are the best practices and what why should we go for the cloud computing on AWS, correct? 
and then we have seen uh, some concepts of the IAM identity access management. Do you guys all have AWS account now? Are you guys ready with the lab? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Lily. Yeah. All right. So, so just wanted to check with you guys. Uh, basically, to in my location, there is uh, some landslides happened last night, and due to that, there was a loss of co collapse happened to the electric poles. So maybe there is a situation that we need to stop the session in the middle of the time. Uh, the poles are getting ready, but in case there is any problem, then we might need to have a shift to another day. All right. Hello, can you hear me guys? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So in our last session, we have seen the, we have started the EC2 part two, and we have certain, uh, we have seen the certain concepts of EC2. Let's just recall some, uh, all the concepts what we have seen so far. The first was AMI, Amazon machine image. So AMI is a, basically a template that gives you information about your operating system, how you want to install all the booting instru instructions, how your system will be rebooted and everything. This AMI may have a certain packages installed by default, like Apache server, MySQL, WordPress. So there are different kinds of configurations available on the Amazon side. You can also create your own custom AMI, AMI that can be a Ubuntu server with uh, Apache server, Nginx, load balancer, etc. You can configure this for your future production servers. Then we have seen the second concept called instance families. And we have seen the five different categories of instance family. A general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, then accelerated computing, and storage optimized. Correct? Lalit, uh, one question. Uh, yeah. Are you sharing your screen now at this moment? Just an uh, audio only. Uh, yeah, currently I'm on audio. I'm not oh. sharing my screen. Now I am oh. sharing. All right, uh, now you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So next, what we have seen, uh, after the instance type, we have seen IAM, IAM roles. An IAM role is nothing but a system, a private link that conducts to AWS services. So for example, if you have a storage kept on the S3, or if you want to have interaction with the SNS Lambda function from your EC2 machine, then you can create a role that gives authentication to the EC2 machine to have communication with the other AWS services. So to have communication between two all the AWS services, you need to create a role. Then we have seen bootstrapping. That is whenever you create, uh, whenever you launch an EC2 machine, at that time you can pass a bootstrap so that whatever the command that you will pass, Amazon will make sure it will install everything. It's called bash scripting. And then we have seen concept called as placement group. That is all nodes are get together so that they have very low latency communication. And finally, we have seen so CPU credit utilization. Every EC2 instance comes with a certain uh, CPU utilization. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> based on the CPU utilization, your instances will work. Right? These are all the concepts we have seen. So let's start our session with our lab session. So hope you can, you have AWS account right now, everyone? Yes, Kobe? Everyone has AWS account? Uh, yes. Yes, Lalit, I think it was in mid. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, I have already logged into my AWS management console. And this is how it looks. There are a lot of services you can see here. Now, yes, all the services in AWS are region specific. There are only very few services like management services or DNS services, which is global service. 
and EC2 is again a regional specific service. So from here, you need to first choose a region where you want to design your infrastructure. You can select any one of this infrastructure, any one of this region, and you can start working on that region. Currently, I've set my uh, infrastructure or my region to the North Virginia. You can set one of them. So before we start, just want to check with you, how are you guys familiar with Linux commands? Are you guys uh, familiar with it, all the Linux commands? Basics Linux command? Uh, no, let it. Okay, fine. So the first step is to ch change the region, in whichever region you want to design your infrastructure, you need to select that. And then from here, there is a first service called EC2. You can click here or you can search it from here, EC2. And this is your EC2 dashboard. Now I have certain services like two key pairs, three security tools. In your case, it will be completely zero, not a problem. The first thing that we need to always check is this health check. This health check defines that particular region and all the data centers inside that region are working perfectly or not. If any of these data centers is having any latency issue, bandwidth issue, or any kind of hardware issue, then here you will find this mark as a cross that is uh, US East 1A is under maintenance or anything it will find. And at that moment, you won't be able to spin up any machine in that particular audit zone. Now 99.99% you won't find any problem here. AWS guarantees about this availability and durability guarantee. So just in case you must have this knowledge, like if you are having dealing with any production based uh, client storage or client interaction, and if, if you are facing any EC2 instance interaction, then you can look at the uh, first of all here and whether that ability zone is working or not perfectly. Now we'll see how to launch an EC2 instance. So we click on launch instance. And here you can see there are a lot of AMIs available. This first two are offered by the Amazon. That is Amazon Linux 2 AMI and Amazon Linux AMI. If you see here, this 2 AMI, it doesn't give you that much of different options. It's just a basic system, system MD219, GCC compiler, and some inbuilt features. The second Linux AMI offers you pre-installed Amazon CLI, Python, Ruby, Perl, Java, and certain repositories like Docker, PHP, MySQL, PostgreSQL. So basically, it's just a template that has all the information about how to download and install the packages and make a system ready with these dependencies. Then there are uh, plain vanilla Red Hat server available, Sys Linux, Ubuntu server, and there is a Microsoft Windows server is also available for your free tier. You can also try this and you will not get charged because Microsoft requires a license. But if you go and if you choose this license, this AMI, you won't get any charge here. Now this is a quick start AMIs. If you have your own custom AMIs, you can click here on my AMI section and here you'll find a list of AMIs. There is a AWS marketplace where different companies are offering you different kinds of AMI. Like Barcuda's Jar Cloud Generations AMI, 10 Micro Cisco Security Related AMIs. Based on your product, you can also search from here. There are a lot of AMIs available, which offers you certain things and there are subscriptions available. And there is a community MI where you will find the different flavors of all the operating systems like Amazon Linux, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, a lot of servers available. There are architecture and root device type. So if you are looking for a specific kind of operating system, you can have a look on this part. We'll click on the quick start and we'll go with the this time first with Windows Server. Most of the time we will be dealing with the Linux based server because most of the infrastructures are developed on Linux based uh, machines. So we'll be focused again on the Linux based system. But the way that you connect to a Linux machine and a Windows machine are different. So first of all, we'll see how you can connect from your lo local host to a Windows server and then we'll work on Linux machine. So the first step was 
to choose AMI. Now coming to the next step, that is instance type. There are a lot of instance types available and all the gender purpose, compute optimized, there are different kinds of uh, families available and you, here you will find all the different families. Now this families contains all different kinds of configurations. Like here you can see T2 Nano offers you one CPU and half GP RAM. T2 Micro offers you one CPU, one GP RAM. T2 Small, one CPU, two GP RAM. So there are a lot of configurations available based on your architecture, based on your application. You can select your valid one. Now as a part of your free tier, you can go with a T2 Micro, which will not get charged to you anything here. But when we say that we are creating a Windows machine, so for a Windows machine, one CPU and one GP RAM will be very less, correct? Because the graphics, the installation and everything requires a lot of things, but still we can create a machine with T2 Micro. You cannot work uh, with high load. You cannot do any kind of processing on this kind of systems because of this low configuration, but at least we can create a system on it. So we'll see here, go with the T2 Micro. Next. Now here comes our configurations page. That is number of EC2 instances you want to create. With the same Windows machine, with the same configuration, how many servers you want to create? Two, four, ten. You can specify the count here. Second is request spot instances. So typically, whenever you unselect this part, this will be considered as on-demand EC2 machine. We have seen this pricing models on-demand spot instance, reserved instance, then dedicated instance and dedicated host, correct? So when we are creating this machine, this will be considered as an on-demand machine. Now, let's consider the on-demand machine having a cost currently running at $0.1 per hour. So when we request for a spot instance, here you will get a price, uh, price list, it's actually loading. And here you can bid on that particular price. Let's say the spot instance price currently is half a dollar, 0 0.05 dollar. So here you can bid on 0 0.06 till the price reaches to 0 0.06. This will be available to you. Once the system has reached to its location, once the reach, uh, once the spot instance has reached to that threshold, it will throw your two messages. Either you can increase your bidding price or you need to terminate or take a backup of your data otherwise we will terminate this machine so at that time you will get two notifications now we will go with that on-demand machine next comes your vpc part that is your networking part now we haven't touched any vpc subnets or any part regarding the networking so we will keep everything default the so most importantly just at the high level Every AWS account will contain one default VPC. Whenever you create an AWS account, you will have one default VPC in all the regions. Now, this is the default VPC. VPC 237 is present in my North Virginia region. Similarly, in your AWS account, there will be a one default VPC. Now, VPC is basically, it's like a group of your IP address, a very giant network of your IP address. And subnet is nothing but a part of that VPC. Let's consider your VPC is like your home. All right. And in your home, you have multiple rooms. So these rooms are nothing but a part of your home. So similarly, these rooms are nothing but your subnets. And your home is a VPC. So that's the basic things. We'll see in VPC part in detail. This is one of the very biggest topic of our course about the center, but as of now, we'll go with the default one, we'll not touch anything. Then do you want to add this part into a placement group? If you want, you can pro put it inside the placement group. Capacity reservation. We have seen the reserve capacity, that is pricing models, in the days are reserved instances. Now reserve instance has a condition. You need to reserve a particular instance for at least next one year or three years. There is only two terms, one year and three year. Now, if you want to buy a system for next one month, two months, three months, for a small period of time, just for the testing purposes and all, 
then you can create a capacity reservation here for a very small period of time now in this part you will not get that much discount as compared to the reserve instance but somewhere you will find it then we have jo domain join directive this option is specifically available for the windows machines only this offers to import any directory from your system if you have any directory you can import to this windows machine then comes to the im rule the im rule that you want to get associated so that this ec2 machine can talk to other services you can select it here we will not touch any of this part here we'll see again one by one how once the ec2 machine is created then how we can customize this part then comes the shutdown behavior that is when i click on shutdown to my ec2 machine what action should be taken place does it should it uh, stop the machine or should it terminate the machine so what actions you want to perform that is basically a little small configuration that you can set now coming to the next part that is termination protection which is like accidental deletion of your ec2 machine if you enable this option then nobody will be able to terminate this ec2 machine if it belongs to the production server then this is one of the best practices that you need to always follow to enable this feature once this it is enabled you won't be directly able to delete any machine whenever you try to delete that machine it will pop up a message that you cannot delete this machine you need to first disable this permissions and then you will be able to download the machine so it's like a two-step verification again do you actually want to delete this machine or not which is one of the best practices now once the ec2 machine is created then also you can enable this option how to do that we'll see one by one step so as of now i'm not touching to this point again then comes to the monitoring part now monitoring part is like every aws services comes up with default monitoring that gives you logs in every five minutes whenever the machine is started from this moment to after next five minutes you will get a logs but it offers you enable detail monitoring a detail monitoring is something that it gives you logs in per interval that is per minute of second in every single minute you will get here logs but when you disable this option here you will get a logs in five minutes now one thing that is important is this is the cloud watch service that monitors everything so when you have five minutes of interval monitoring that comes with a free package you will not get charged extra for creation of the resources or monitoring the resources but if you enable this detailed monitoring you will have to pay extra charges here it says additional charges apply next is tenancy a tenancy is like do you want to go with a shared model that is a common hardware is shared within multiple aws customers or do you want to create a dedicated instance you can choose that elastic graphics do you want a gpu processing along with this t2 micro you can add for the graphics acceleration again this option is only available for the windows type of machine if you are having a linux machine then you need to go with the particular that particular instance type that is accelerated computing and then we have t2 t3 unlimited that is burstable performance cpu credit and in the advanced details we have here patch script that is if you want to pre-install anything before the system gets ready then you can power you can provide here the patch script so as of now this is our first ec2 machine so i'm not doing anything i will keep everything default and we'll hit on to next as storage It's taking a lot of time. Are you guys facing the same problem in North Virginia? Okay. Now here you can see. Now from exam point of view, 
this is very important to remember if you are having a windows machine then for a windows machine minimum 30 gb of storage is required to boot your system minimum 30 gb of storage is required for a linux machine only 8 gb is required this can be an exam question oh shit From Windows machine, EBS of minimum 30 GB, and for Linux, 8 GB is minimum required. This is a minimum capacity. Uh, I think there is problems happening with the North Virginia. Let me just hit to the Mumbai region. Just give me a second. I'll quickly create one. Again, selecting the Windows machine. D2 micro instance. I'm keeping everything default. We are not changing anything as of now. Then add storage. For a Windows machine, again, 30 GB storage is minimum required. And we'll see what are the other storage that you can add and everything. We'll see one by one step ahead. Next is add tags. That is, if you want to manage all the different AWS servers, then you can manage with the tags. Tags plays an important role on your server side. That is, if you want to uh, filter in tags based on the productions, based on the tests, based on the staging, then you can sort all this based on these tags. You can add multiple tags, and these tags are absolutely free. Like, I give a name called as Windows Server. Another text, maybe it belongs to my production environment. Environment prod. Whatever it is, you can add multiple so that it will become easy to sort the multiple resources. Next comes our security group. Now, basically, a security group acts as a virtual firewall, a firewall that will control your inbounds and outbound traffic like who and which port it can this ec2 machine can be accessible if you are running any web servers on this ec2 machine then you can 
enable that particular port that is 80 port 443 port and that particular port will be able open to the world so that anyone can connect to your server so on which port do you want to enable this feature you need to specifically define now very important point here again aws by default denies all the port all the tcp port all the udp port by default is denied you need to specifically allow which port you want to have communication if you want to have communication on port 3389 22 80 443 what specifically port that you want to have communication you need to specifically define so let's design one security group here let's call windows security All right, now to connect a Windows machine from a Windows machine to another version or from Linux machine to Windows machine, we require an RDP connection, Renault uh, remote desktop connection. So we have this RDP by default open here, 3389 port. Now you can add a rule, like if you want to have HTTP, HTTPS, 443, Linux, whatever the port that you want to open, you can select one of these. You can also specify all TCP, all traffic, all ICMP, or a custom protocol, whatever you have. The next important part here is this source. From which source the request should be accepted? The source from your own organization, the source from your client organization, the source can be open to the world, whatever it is, you can specify here. Like here, you can specify your organization range. So any machine on your organization only that will be able to communicate on this machine. Otherwise, everything is denied. If I select my IP, then it will automatically fetch my particular machine IP. That is this uh, Mac machine IP. And only this machine will be able to talk to this machine. On the other side, you sitting on elsewhere is trying to hit to my machine or trying to connect to this Windows machine then you won't be able to because your public IP, your computer IP denies my firewall. So in this way, you can protect your infrastructure from getting requested. So as of now, I'm going with anywhere that is anyone on the internet can access to my EC2 machine. Review. This is the review section there. What resources that you are creating all about these resources and click on launch. Now here we need to create a key pair. A key pair is basically a login credential to your EC2 machine. You need to keep this key pair very secure. This is the first time, one time only that you will be able to download this key pair. Next time you won't be able to download the same key pair. Yes, Kopi. Yeah, uh, there's a question you know, from the show uh, with regards to the you know, source connection. Yeah. Well, if the any uh, customization of IP can be mentioned over there uh, because you showed uh, my IP and uh, anyway, custom is custom. I can directly enter that. Yes, you can enter any custom IP range, an okay. IP range of IP address or a particular IP okay. address. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If I select anywhere, then it will be open to the world 0, okay. 0, 0, 0. Yeah, got That it, is got it. four. And this is IP version 6. And then we click on launch. Now this key pair is very important. This key pair will help you to log into that particular EC2 machine. Whenever you create a key pair, you need to keep it very secure. And this key pair, you won't be able to recreate again. If an EC2 machine is associated with one key pair, and if you lose that key pair, you won't be able to connect to that machine again. So keep it very secure. Now, if you have only existing key pair, you can select one or you can click on create a new key pair. Yeah, you can provide a name. Let's kill ICL key pair. And click on download the key pair. Then click on launch instance.
Now, when you create a Windows machine, Windows machine takes at least minimum four minutes to you know boot up all the EC2 machine and make sure that system is working fine because it has graphics and a lot of things. So it takes up to four minutes. But for a Linux machine, it can be available for you within 30 seconds to one minute. So this is our launch configuration. That is, we have created one EC2 machine. This is an instance ID, a unique ID which is associated to every EC2 instance in AWS account. The instance type in which every zone you have created, the security that you have allowed, that is 3389 port TCP open to the world. Then all the description about your EC2 machine. On the right hand side, if you see, there is a public DNS. This is public DNS that can be opened from the browser. <clears throat> Again, the same public IP and here we have private IP and private DNS, which is a part of your VPC and all the description about the subnet ID. And here we have a block device. How many block devices are connected to that machine? So it gives a total idea for the description part, which is it will instance belong to what number of services. The next part is here in the status check. Now there are two types of status check. One is system status and second is instance status. A system status is basically whenever a EC2 machine is created on the AWS hardware, creation of this EC2 machine that is virtual machine on Amazon hardware, if it is successful, then it will mark as correct. That is one check is successfully flagged. Second call as instance status. Instance status is called when your EC2 machine creation, booting of your EC2 machine, all the networking part is configured properly, then it will flag as one. So when both of this instance status check and system status check mark as one one, then here you will find two by two check. If there is any problem at the AWS hardware, that is from the AWS LD zone, then here you might find 0y1 LD check, or there is some type of LD check available 0x1, 1x2, or 2x2. 2x2 says that everything is working fine. After 4 5 minutes, here also you will find 2x2 check. Then comes the monitoring part monitoring of your entire EC2 instance. There are a lot of EC2 instance monitoring available. CP utilization, disk rate, write operations, a lot of things available. You can look into this diagram. And this monitoring is basically every five minutes of interval. Now to connect to this machine, uh, Windows Server, you click on connect. And here it says the public DNS IP, username. And to get a password, you click on here. Then choose key pair, the key pair that you have downloaded .pm file. You need to select that key pair. For me, it's like IACL key pair .pm file. I open this file name and call as decrypt password. Now I have a IP to which I want to connect. I have username and a password. Now, if you are using a Windows computer, then in your Windows computer, there will be a one application called RDP. If you click on start button, there you will find an RDP, remote desktop connection. If you are using a Linux system, then you need to download a software called as Relimia, which uh, uses, which you use to connect the Windows server. And for if you are having a Mac machine, again, you can download this Microsoft remote desktop. So whatever you have, the steps are again same. You click on add desktop and here you provide your last EC2 machine public IP or the public DNS. Copy this, paste it here and click on add. Now once you do, it will ask you the username and password. Copy the username and the password. And then 
click on yes or continue whatever options you get on the your screen And here you can see here you have launched your first Windows Spacer EC2 machine. It will take few seconds to configure again the basic parts and everything. If I open the Windows Explorer, going to this PC, and here we find the 30 GB of storage. After that, 16 GB is already consumed. Now, if you are having connecting to this machine. You just need to click on start button and here you need to search for RDB. Here you will find on your system if you are using a Windows space system, then you can click on here. You can provide the public IP here of your EC2 machine. Click on connect and then you will be required to pass the username and password. Once you do that, you will be able to log into this machine. Are you guys trying at the same time? Yes, yes, we Okay, are you able to connect to this machine, everyone? Yes, yes. yes. All right, very nice. Let me know if you have any difficulty. So this is how you can connect to a Windows machine. All right. Now, one important part that you need to remember if you don't want to get charged for the AWS consumption that every month you are getting only 30 GB per month of EBS storage, 30 GB of EBS storage per month. And we know that Windows machine requires 30 GB of server capacity, that is storage capacity. So in case if you are trying, if you want to try a lot of things on the EC2 instance, now you need to make sure once you are done you make sure you click on action go to install state and terminate this machine in that way you will not get charged anything extra for consumption of this ebs volumes all right now let's do one more thing let's create a linux machine at the same time so what we need to do we again click on launch instance and here we select one of the linux machines type I'll go with the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Again, T2 Micro. And again, we'll keep everything default. We'll still not touch anything. We'll see one by one features again. Add storage. Now here you can see the minimum storage is required is 8 GB. For a Linux machine, this is very important to remember. You require only 8 GB of storage. Then click on add tags. Yeah, again, you can provide the tags name. Let's call it Linux server. And again, environment for whatever it is, you can add the details. Configure security group. And this time, let's create a new security group called as Linux security group. And now for a Linux machine to connect one Linux machine to another or whenever you have a communication for a Linux machine, you don't require an 3389 or RDP port. At the time you will require an SSH communication. So here we provide the SSH part. Also what I will do is I will add HTTP that is port 80. So that if we install any Apache server, any kind of server, then we should be able to hit from the browser. Review and launch. Now this time I will go with the same key pair. I will not create another key pair. The one that we have just created, ISIL group. And click on launch instance. And here you can see there is a two by two check on our Windows server now. That is both the system status check and the instance status checks are working perfectly fine.
now the way that you will connect to the linux machine are different from operating system to operating system i will show you first how you can connect to a linux machine if you are already having a linux machine on your host computer or a mac machine so first of all you need to copy the public ip and you can open the terminal uh, in case you have terminal or in the Linux machine or the Mac machine, you can open this. All right. Then I go to the download section. Basically, my key PM file is available in the download section. So I change the directory CD, change directory to the downloads. All right. Now, every time you download a new key pair, the first thing that you need to do is change the permission of that file. This is a one time job. So, how you do this? ch mode change permission to 400 400 basically gives you public read 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 access to that file and here you specify your file name that is icl key pair dot pm file you change the permission here ch mode 400 now the command to connect to the linux machine from another linux machine is ssh hyphen i ISL key pair again the name of your key pair EC2 hyphen user. This is very important. This is a username of your Linux machine. Just like for our Windows machine, we have a username called administrator. Similarly, for our Linux machine, the username is EC2 hyphen user. If you are using a Ubuntu AMI, then you need the username will be Ubuntu, Ubuntu at the rate and the public IP. So what is the command ssh hyphen i name of your key pair ec2 that is username at the rate your public ip and then you hit enter now it will ask you do you want to connect to the host yes and here you are connected to a linux machine whenever you see ec2 amazon linux to mi it means you are connected to a linux machine and here also you can see this is now your private IP 172.31.94.110, which is your Linux machine private IP. All right, just have a look, try this part, uh, and let me know once you are done. If you have any questions, let me know, and then we'll move forward to the next part. Lali, 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 yeah. Lali. Uh, your voice is echoing, Ravi. Now, can I hear Still is echoing, repeating once again and again. Uh, Lalit, uh, I just launched that uh, EC2 instance for uh, Linux machine. Okay. And uh, I just tried trying to connect to Putty. Okay. And right. uh, this public that link, uh, public link, a static IP uh, link, and it is asking for uh, login uh, ID password, login as. Right. Okay, so I'll show you how to do with the putty. So this is your Windows machine, right? The first thing that you need to do is you need to download a putty. And here from here the putty side you can download the putty tool based on your system 32 64 bit
and you can then install your putty tool. Now, when you install this putty tools, it comes with two tools that is putty and putty gel. All right. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to open this putty gel and you need to change the file from .pm to .ppk. So in this, this is my local machine. This is not my local machine. This is an EC2 machine, this Windows. So I just need to create a small file here. So I will just open this. I'll uh, copy my PM file. And I giving a name ISL dot PM. All right. So the same key fair I have created in my remote machine. All right. So I need to click here on this putty key generator. Then I click on load. And from my desktop where I have saved this file, I click on all files and I select the particular file. Um, isl.pm file open and then you need to click on save private key yes and i click on desktop save this file on desktop isl key pair so once it is created we have converted this file from pem to ppk now again from the putty tool there will be a software called putty available Click on that. And again, here you need to provide the EC2 hyphen user at the rate. If you are not using this EC2 hyphen user at the rate, and if you're just directly passing the public IP, then you need to pass your EC2 hyphen user, EC2 hyphen user after once it is launched. That is, I provide here the public IP from the SSH. I click on auth. Browse the PPK file again from the desktop and click on open. And then click on yes. So now this time it will not ask me any login and password. So Ravi, if you are if this is asking your username here, then you can pass EC2 hyphen user. Both the sites is acceptable. Yeah, first we have to generate the key from the putty generate. Right, you need to generate the file from PM to PPK. You need to convert that file. What, what's next step after PPK? Okay, I show you. I show you one second. You click on the gen tool. All right, then you click on load, and here you select the PM file, the one that is you have downloaded. Okay. This is a isl.pm file. Okay, you select open and then you click on save private key. Yes, without protection. And here you give a name and click on save. Now, this time the extension will be .ppk file. Let me know once you are all able to connect to this machine. Yes, sir. Uh, Lalit, it's again asking for the login. Lalit? Hello, yeah, pardon? What is asking? Yeah, it's again, yeah, it's again asking for login as. Okay, login as give EC2 hyphen user.
Are you connected now? No. What uh, what problem you are facing? Can you just show me your screen? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I just make you presenter. I'm making presenter to Gopi. Lali? Lali? Yes. Lali? Yes. 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 And your public IP. Hello. Uh, can you see my screen, Ali? Yeah, I can see your screen. Can you just open the putty? Have you converted that PM file to PPK? Yeah, yeah, I converted. Uh, you can see it. Okay, great. Uh, now, open the... yeah. So oh, wait, wait, wait. First of all, go back to the previous session. Can you just scroll a little bit more up? Yeah. Click on the session, and here you provide the host name, your public IP of your EC2 machine. This one, right? Yeah, you can take this one. Okay. All right. Now you click on SSH and then inside that auth. Yeah, click on auth. The last second. Yeah. Now browse the II file. Yes. And click on open. Now provide EC2 hyphen user. Which AMI you have chosen? Which AMI you have chosen? Uh, server refuse your key, basically. I think you have chosen the wrong key for connecting. The key, uh, I just use that uh, key which is provided. Uh, can you just scroll a bit more in the description? Uh, uh, the key is Winky pair, right? Winky pair. Okay, can you just once again uh, create a new key pair for me? Uh, just yeah, open the key, uh, generator. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, the fourth one, the fourth one, being keep here. Yeah. Okay. Now click on save private key. Yes. And give a name. All right. Now open the uh, EC2. Uh, putty, sorry. Yeah, you just need to provide the public IP. Yeah, go back to the AWS console. Yeah, scroll up. 54, 120, 146. You can copy that one. Open. Open. Yes. Easy to have an user. Okay. Now you are connected. Yes. Basically, the last time that you are trying is uh, you are not using the same key pair for generating PPK files. That's fine. Yeah. Thanks, Ali.
All right, sir. Everyone has uh, got their EC2 machine ready, up and running. All right. So I am inside my EC2 machine. Let's just do one simple thing. Now this EC2 machine is connected to internet. If I do a ping, I will get a data because this is my public EC2 machine and I'm receiving the data. So I do so. And here Ready? I stop. Yes. Uh, in this Ubuntu machine, can I get that graphics uh, GUI? How to get that GUI in the Ubuntu? Uh, no, uh, for all the Linux machine, you won't get any GUI here. For a Linux machine that you want a GUI, you need to use your own custom AMI for that. Okay. I think it's whatever the predefined. Uh, 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 Images available in the uh, EC2 is cannot get those uh, GUI. They don't have any GUI. Okay. If, 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 if we uh, want to access that GUI, you have to uh, have that custom uh, image, right? Yeah, you need to have the custom image or you need to download the packages that will provide you that GUI. Okay. Yeah. So here I quickly download the Apache server. Now the mm -hmm command to install the apache server in your apache in your linux ami is yum install httpd and i provide so is downloading the package is asking do you want to download yes and then i provide a command service httpd start to start my apache server so once it is downloaded once it is installed now I can just copy the public IP. And if I hit to the browser, I can see this test page. At the same time, if I provide you this my uh, IP address, you will be also able to see the entire thing. You can also try from your browser if you hit the site. Now I hope you know that uh, whenever we have an EC2 machine or any server, and whenever we install any application server, every server has a particular directory that is called as public folder. Whatever the data that you will dump into this directory, you will find on the browser. Correct? So you can go to, go to the variable uh, yw.html folder. This is the public folder. And inside this, you can create any file. I'm creating a small index.html file with have some dummy data. Let's call test page. And if I just refresh the page, one second, it's giving my uh, data that is this is the test page. I can install entire website here. I can dump all the data of my page in this folder and I will be able to see my entire application running on this server. So this is how you can launch a EC2 machine. You can custom, you can have a server installed on your system. Any doubt, any question in this part? Yes. Uh, when it comes to the uh, accessing the uh, services, which is uh, 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 depends on the region, uh, how this EC2 can be uh, 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 configured in terms of accessing all the uh, IAM services? Uh, well, because this uh, EC2 instance is uh, region specific, right? Yes, this is a region specific. Now, basically, all AWS services are region specific. Only the services which are based on the management services or DNS services, 
that are only global services apart from that whatever the infrastructure you have that needs to be on a particular region now in case if you want to expand your region if you want to access the two different infrastructure in two different regions then you can have vpn connection between two vpcs and it will act like a common infrastructure one ec2 instance can talk to another ec2 instance on different vpc on different region okay and also the services uh, for example lambda services or uh, 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 sns services how we can just configure in the ec2 instance uh, uh, with region specific yeah basically all region or whenever you have a role in between two aws services that are basically region specific only when you have created a role and attached this role to this ec2 machine this ec2 machine can have that particular access to lambda function in the same region you cannot have communication on above this region level at the time again you need, reach, uh, you know you need to create a bridge between two aws services and then you will be able to communicate between two aws services so you see that part okay so like last last week you just explained about the connecting the bridge between the uh, different regions right in that way we have to add yes we need to add that like that only okay lali yes i have one doubt uh, i have i have two accounts one from ohio and one from virginia if i download a okay. uh, key from ohio and i can share that to virginia and i can use that yes uh, basically you cannot do that whenever you download okay. a pm file that is basically a private file okay. that private file you make it public so mm -hmm. amazon will only allow you to upload a public file not a private file so you can create One. your own public files and you can upload it to two two different regions and that you mm -hmm. do use the same key pair to in multiple regions also but you cannot okay. use amazon key pair for a multi regional things okay. one public key in uh, key pair in how many regions we can use you can give to all the regions but all that region. public key needs to be your public key okay thank you yeah anything else is any question in doubt looks fine now all right so now let's just dip into drive and see what our options we have as well so when i click on this action setting i have instance state that is i can stop a machine i can reboot a machine i can terminate this machine whatever i want to then in the instance setting if you want to edit a tag if you want to add a tag you can just go and change the part second is add to an auto scaling group now we don't know what is auto scaling we need to see into this first picture then we'll come into that part and then we have attached a repress im role so if you remember last lecture uh, we have created an im role that im role is basically giving a permission to ec2 to have access to the s3 correct do you remember that part I think that uh, role is this one EC2 full access to S3. So basically, this role is created to have S3 full access. And I am here giving a permission that EC2 can, can full have full access to S3. Now, if I attach this role to my EC2 machine, the one that I have already in my system, I can list all my data with S3. Let's just have a look how we can do this. So in this uh, here currently I'm in EC2 machine, and if I pass a command AWS S3 LS, that is list all my buckets in my S3. Then it says you are not configured. That is you need to provide your credentials, and once the credentials you have provided, then you will be able to communicate to S3. But we need to eliminate this part, right? We need to eliminate the credential passing in our system. So what we do, we click on action, we go to the instance setting, we click on attach and replace IAM role. And here we search that IAM role. 
that is EC2 full access to S3, the one that we have created. We we'll select that role and then we click on apply. Now, once we have attached this role to our EC2 machine, now we do not require to hard code any credential in our system. Let's just try once again, AWS S3 LS. And now this time you can see, these are all my data inside my S3. These are basically some buckets in my S3. Previously, it was asking us to locate the credentials. You can configure the credential, that is AWS configure, you do. You provide your username, password, access key, secret key, everything. And then you will be able to connect to this S3 bucket. But once we have connected this IAM role, we do not require any IAM credentials. We have given a permission that it can access to all the S3 buckets. So in this way, whenever you have application running in your system, let's say you have application running with PHP or Java, whatever the application you are running in this EC2 machine on this EC2 server, that's the EC2 server request for some data which is located in S3. Now to have this communication, you don't require to create any credential. You don't need to pass any credentials. You can just create a role for this. All right. So in this way, you can eliminate the part of hard coding the credentials. Lalit, uh, could you please repeat that step uh, adding that uh, uh, IAM role to S3? Yeah, sure. So do you have that IAM role already created? Yes. All right. Or do you want me to create an IAM role again? I just want to know uh, how to add, access, give the access, attach the uh, S3 access to uh, EC2 okay. clients. So you need to click on, you need to go to the IAM section first of all, and the yeah. role section, you create a role. When you create, click on create a role, it asks you first AWS services, on which service you want to give permission. So in that case, in our case, we need to give permission to our EC2 machine. So here we click on EC2 and then click on permission. And here we define what permission we need to define. Let's give S3 full access. I select this permission, click on next tag, review. And here we need to give a name. Let's call this demo S3 access this time. And click on create a role. So now we have already created this role that is demo S3 access. Now we go to our EC2 machine. We we'll click on that particular EC2 machine. Let that EC2 machine click on action. Go to instance setting. Click on attach or replace an IAM role. And here we need to select that role. So currently we have, selected, we have created this demo S3 access. So I select that role and then click on apply. All right. Yes, I'm doing. Oh, okay, great. So shall we move ahead? Are, are you trying? Yeah, I'm trying. Okay, let me know once you are done. Just trying to get the connection. Yeah, we can move forward. Like this. All right.
and Lalit, uh, once we click on this terminate button, uh, it will delete that instance, right? Yes. As you can see here, it will terminate the instance, but it will take few times to, uh, you know, look into this, uh, to remove this part from your EC2 section. When you click on this terminate, the system is already terminated. You won't get charged anymore. But to remove this part from your this section, it will take a few minutes, 15, 20 minutes, maybe it will take. So don't worry about that. It's already terminated. Okay, when I click on stop. Okay, when you click on stop, at that time, you will not get charged for the instance that you are using. Okay, your instance capacity is got free. But the volume okay. that is associated, the EBS volume, 30 GB or 8 GB or whatever the GB of storage that you have attached, that is still chargeable because that okay. particular story is reserved for your AWS account. It contains your data, so it will charge you. And also, uh, this volume, right? Uh, see, since it is a free tier, uh, and this is for free, right? Uh, uh, whatever the ins uh, instance I just uh, uh, created for Windows and Ubuntu, if it is free tier, I think that uh, are they going to charge for the volume again? Uh, yeah, basically, if you are exceeding more than 30 GB per month, then it will charge you. Okay. If, if it is in free time, then there is no charges for that. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not one more question. <laughs> All right. Yeah, one more question is after termination, can we relaunch this uh, image or instance? Same, same. No, no. Same Once once the EC2 instance is terminated, you are not able to access this data or you cannot reinitiate this EC2 machine again. So fresh one, fresh one. You have to create okay. Now, what you can do is when you are trying to terminate this machine, at that time you can specify that it should not delete your data. That you can do this. Basically, this is your EC2 machine, but the data which is situated with the data where it is situated all your operating system and all the application server that you have installed is basically on the EBS side. So from the left hand side, if you click on the volumes, then here you will find days of one volumes with the same name called as Linux server. And this is the HGB of your data. Now this HGB of data is actually the data which is residing in your EC2 machine. Now, in case if you want to preserve this data and just want to terminate your EC2 machine, then you can do this. What you need to do is either you can take a snapshot of this machine. We'll see in detail what is snapshot and how you can do this. Or you can detach this volume. You detach this volume, which means your EC2 machine is now free to terminate it will not affect to your data at all you can create another machine and attach this EBS volume to that newly created ec2 machine and you will have your data in that case you can do this all right so now next moving to the next part we'll see how to create your own custom ami we know that in our ami we have one bucket uh, we have our credentials and then we have created one index.html file, right? In our core vanilla EC2 machine, we now have an application server running in our system that is Apache server and an index.html file. So what I do is I created this snapshot of this AMI so that whenever a new EC2 machine I want to create with the same replica, I can have it. I don't require to do it. I don't require to do anything here. So click on action, click on image, and then click on create image. And here you need to give a name. Let's say snapshot of Apache and Amazon AMI2, All right? And then you click on create image. Now the snapshot creation is absolutely free on AWS. You will not get charged for creation of any snapshot. But the amount of storage that you will consume, that is currently this volume contains 8 GB of data. So the again creation of a new 8 GB of data 
that will be chargeable and it will be consumed from your free tier of 30 gb of storage so once you have done this part you can go to this uh, ami section from the left hand side and here you will find the newly created snapshot is under pending state it will take a few seconds here Now guys, you need to understand one important thing. What is basically an AMI? Can anyone tell me what is basically an AMI? We have seen this two times. Yes guys, what is basically? Hello. Hello guys. What is AMI? We have seen these things. And AMI is nothing but a template that gives a description about how your system needs to be built and what are the application that needs to be installed or it contains correct so similarly when we have created our ec2 machine and then we have created the snapshot that is ami this ami will contains only the information about our system that is we have choose amazon linux ami and uh, we have installed apache server etc but it will not contain all the details or the data which is written inside this AMI. This data will be available in this block device. That is, it's called snapshot 06 ABC. This is a snapshot that will contain the, all the AGP of data that you have stored on that EC2 machine, which is a part of this AMI. If you click from the left hand side, if you go to the snapshot section, here you will find there is an automatic created and snapshot. This snapshot is a part of that AMI that will actually contain the data residing in your EC2 machine inside your AMI. So there are two things. Whenever you have EC2 machine, you have two things to do. One is AMI and second is the volume that where your data is stored all right this ami is nothing but the template of about the, that gives a description of what ec2 machine you are running what operating system you are running and what kind of data which is residing inside the system it will just have a brief overview but the actual data about this snapshot will be present in this volume it's called as snapshot now similarly whenever you create an ec2 machine at that time also you select an ami but that ami doesn't gives you any data that data which is associated with that ami is actually present on the amazon side which is stored on the aws amazon account that data is get copied to your EC2 machine. So to every AMI, there is a particular snapshot or particular volume is attached. And every time you create an EC2 machine, your EC2 machine will also contain a volume that stores the data. Now this is the persistent storage system, which means the data which is written on your disk, it will contain all the information like the one when you have installed the apache server whatever the download packages are downloaded whenever it has configured and everything all these files are already a part of this snapshot secondly we have installed we have created one index.html file so that index.html file is also a part of the snapshot 
it will contain all the information all right so i hope now you are okay with this ami and the snapshot part are you getting this guys this is very important basically lalit can you repeat it yeah like uh, two minutes there is an issue with the uh, screen sharing okay uh, basically you cannot directly screen share your screen uh, you need to ask me i need i will make you presenter then you will be able to share your screen no no here yeah, the projector screen okay okay fine let me know once you are okay with that Uh, Lali. Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Please talk. Hello. Hello. Please hear me. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, hi, Gopi. Hello, hi, Gopi. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Sorry, there's something like me. Okay. Can you just, you know, uh, start from the game, uh, the game I think, and also the snapshot? Sure. 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 So, uh, before we start, like, can you guys tell me what is AMI? What do you know about this AMI? The basics. Yeah, it is, uh, you said it is a template, Amazon template. Yes, absolutely. So basically, it's just a template that gives you a description about what operating system you are running and what are the packages involved in that operating system. Just like whenever you 
you can't uh, launch an EC2 machine. Here you can find a lot of AMIs available. This all the AMIs will offer you different kinds of features. Like you can see here, this AMI gives you CLI, Python, Ruby, Perl, Java, etc. And if you scroll on, there are a lot of things available. So AMI is nothing but information about your system. But actually the data, when we say there is an AMI available, which gives you Ubuntu plus WordPress install. All right. So this AMI will contain certain data where it is stored, the WordPress documentation, the WordPress installation files, and the Ubuntu files. So that data is present on certain volumes. This volume holds the data which you require to create that EC2 machine. Now the AMI that you see on the AWS, these volumes are hidden from your AWS account. These are the private volume which is stored on the AWS side. The owner of these volumes are basically AWS. So whenever you choose for this AMI, it takes a data from this volume which is on the private side of the AWS and configure a EC2 machine for you. So this is a general scenario. Let's say you have your custom EC2 machine. All right. And in this custom EC2 machine, you have installed with Ubuntu, you have certain PHP, certain, you know, Perl plus WordPress, let's say, whatever the number of applications you have installed. Now, when you take a snapshot of this custom EC2 machine, it will create two things again. One that is called AMI and second call a snapshot. And this AMI and snapshot are together coupled. This AMI will give you option to access the data which is a part of your snapshot. The actual data of 8 GB of storage of your Ubuntu installation file, the PHP installation file, Perl and WordPress, whatever the software you have installed, the actual data will be present on this snapshot. And this snapshot will be attached to that particular AMI. So if you want to replicate the EC2 machine, then you select this AMI and the data will be automatically fetched from this snapshot. So technically, whenever you create an AMI, two things will be automatically get created. An AMI and a snapshot. Now if you go to the snapshot section and if you try to delete the snapshot, you won't be able to delete the snapshot. Because the snapshot is a part of an AMI. You need to first deregister or delete this AMI to delete that snapshot. All right. Now you get it. This part, AMI part. Any yeah, question? Yeah. Yeah. When you when you install these custom applications like PHP, Perl, and WordPress. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how 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 we can just. Uh, uh, get this image uh, uh, for example storing a snapshot with this will it be associated with the AMI with the snapshot or what yes this snapshot will be associated to this AMI you cannot delete this snapshot this can, uh, if you want to delete this snapshot you need to first delete this AMI and then this snapshot will be automatically deleted All right, now let's see if you want to create an EC2 machine of that AMI. So again, I go back to the AMI section. I have this AMI which I have created. This contains a Apache server and one index.html file. This is just a snapshot. The actual data is present on my snapshot here, the AGP of data. So what I do, I go to the AMI section and then I simply click on launch EC2 machine. And launching of DC2 EC2 machine, now it will not ask me to choose an AMI because the AMI is already been chosen. That is my custom AMI. This is the one way that you can create an EC2 machine. Or what you can do is you can go back to the instances, click on launch instance, and now you can click on my AMI. In this my AMI, you will find the AMI that you have just created. You select that AMI. And again, this is the same way that you used to create an image. You go select the T2 micro. 
keeping all the things default add storage again it's you have storage you say add tags let's call it replica configure security go now we have already created one security last time for the linux machine on which we have opened this port 22 and 80 we use the same port again we use the same security group and then click on review and launch same procedure but the difference will be this ec2 machine the one that we have just created it will have all the information regarding your apache server it will have automatic you know inclusion of the apache server and the index.html file we just need to wait for the system to come up automatically Okay, this machine is in running state. Uh, let's just copy the public IP and hit to the browser. And it will take few minutes to configure and to download the packages uh, to again configure the Apache server. This will automatically have Apache server. But what we need to do is we need to start the server. So I connect to this machine again and the newly created machine yes and if i here pass the command uh service httpd status that is to check whether the apache server is running or not then it says apache server is not access but it has that future it has all the configuration files and everything what we just need to do is service httpd start and now if I hit from the browser, the public IP, it must throw us test page. The index.html files is automatically got replicated to another EC2 machine. Are you getting this guys? The same replica yeah. of your EC2 machine from your first EC2 machine and the second EC2 issue machine are now same. Now just have a look or consider this example at the high level. Just forget about what we are doing and we are dealing with a single EC2 machine. Let's just talk about that at the high level. We have 50,000 of EC2 machine for a very giant client. All right. And you have an auto scaling configuration enabled. Auto scaling is basically like it will automatically create a new machine for you if there is a high spike on your system. All right. So in that scenario, whenever a new machine will automatically come, that machine also requires certain information. Let's say your applications are dependent on Python. Okay, the application that you have on your EC2 machine is basically on the Python. Now you need to make sure that whenever a new EC2 machine comes up automatically, it must have that Python library installed, all the dependencies and everything. Correct? At the high level, if you consider, then at that time you can use the CMI to make sure that everything is available on your auto scaling mode. Whenever a new EC2 machine comes up, it will have all the packages and all the dependencies, whatever you want to set. With this AMI custom AMI, you can use and make a better use of your auto scaling configuration. All right, any question, any doubt in this part? There are a lot of things still need to see on this AMI part. Lalit, can you go to that AMI uh, section on the left panel? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just created the snapshot, right, for that. Uh, uh. So what you need to do is, in your EC2 machine, you need to select that EC2 machine, click on action, go to the image section, and then click on create image. Once okay. you do, you will find in the EMI part, the one that you have just created. And this okay. EMI will be associated with the snapshot, which is present in the snapshot section. Okay. 
now what if i want to design or i want to replicate my infrastructure into another region i have an infrastructure small infrastructure in mumbai which is what i need to replicate it to another region which must have all the dependencies and whatever i have currently in my system it must have also all the same infrastructure this is a general scenario so in that case what aws offers you is you go to the ami part you click on action and here you need to just click on copy ami when you select and uh, when you copy this ami when you do this one it will ask you the destination region at that time you can copy this ami to another region maybe you want to design your infrastructure now this time in mumbai so you select here mumbai and whatever the name that you want to give you do here and click on copy ami when you do this the same ami and this name snapshot will be copied into the mumbai region now with that ami in mumbai region you can again replicate your ec2 machines and design your infrastructure in mumbai again the same replica it will also contain a apache server and an index.html file all right so this is how you can transfer your data or you can you know uh, migrate your data from one region to another region on aws using ec2 ami future now this ami also comes up with different kinds of options like here you can share this ami with other aws account i like if i want to share my aws uh, this ami with your aws account i can do this this will be very privately shared between two aws account i can also share this ami with publicly anyone can access to this ami whoever if you want so how to do that just click on action or you can just click on permission section here and click on edit now if you want to share it very privately with another aws account maybe you have few accounts one for the production one for the test one for the you know developers or anything if you want to share the ami you can provide here the aws account id to add digit and click on add permission the other person from that particular aws account will get this ami in case if you want to publicly share that is anyone on the internet anyone on the aws can use this ami then here you click on public and then you click on save this ami will be publicly available now let's say you have shared an ami of your custom ami with me so how i can find that i just need to click on here owned by me and here then i need to click on private images if you have shared an image with me privately then i will find in this section if you want to see the public images which is shared by different aws account you click on public images and here you will find a very big list of emis which is publicly available yeah you can see it's uh, more than 122247 emis in north virginia available which is publicly available you can just click on this and launch an ec2 machine for that so these are the three ways that you can share your ami with another aws account or with this another region all right any question in doubt in this part ami part lalit these publicly available images is uh, provided by the, uh, uh, the amazon services or uh, anyone who is already published by uh, in, in, a, yeah. in a different region yeah just like as you can do also this publicly share similarly various aws customers has shared their aws amis publicly so these are those all the amis it also includes some of the ami which is offered by the aws and some amis which is shared by the different aws customers okay yeah uh, Lali, uh, for user how many you know free instances uh, we can you know create sorry once again how many free instances uh, we can create uh, for user really how many how many is it yeah. basically the default limit of your free tier account is you can create max up to 20 ec2 instance per region that is the default limit now in case if you want to increase this limit you can just raise a support ticket 
and you need to give a valid reason why you want to increase the limit and AWS will increase your limit. But the default limit of your number of EC2 instances that you can create in your AWS account is 20. It's not dependent on how many users you can I'm, I'm actually asking about the free tier, free tier instances. Yeah, in free tier also, you can create max up to 20 EC2 instances. After that, you need to raise the support ticket and increase the size of the limit. Okay. All right, any other questions, any other doubt? All right. So what is it? If you want to create in uh, uh, the Ubuntu or Linux instances, what is the maximum size we can go? That uh, minimum is 8 GB. Maximum, you can go with till 16 terabytes. In the free have, yeah. yeah, in your free tier also. But it will cost you. Up till 30 GB, it will be free. Post 30 GB, yeah. charge you. Yeah, I'm just asking uh, the free tier uh, access. Up to 30, 30 GB, right? Or because right. 30 GB only. Windows no. machine, it's uh, 30 GB. And Linux also, it's 30 GB? 30. The basic, the minimum requirement for creation of a Windows machine is 30 GB. And for a Linux machine, the minimum requirement is 8 GB. Now, there will be a scenario like you will require 100 GB to 100 GB for storing of your data in that particular machine. So you can easily add, you can say 108 GB of my EC2 machine I will require. So you will get it 108 GB, 108 GB of your volume for your Linux machine. That is not a case. You can have up to 16 terabytes of data available for your EC2 machine. But the only condition here is in your free account, you will be not get charged for the starting 30 GB. For the rest of the part from 30 GB to the 108 GB, you will get charged for that. And there is no limit that you can create n number of resources here. You can have as many as you want. You can create as many as EBS volume you want. There's no limit to that. Just a thing is you need to pay for that. Did you get that part? Just like your, just like your computer, a Windows computer that have 500 GB of SSD storage, uh, there may be a case that you will have one terabyte of SSD storage. Just like you can have a number of storage. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Lord. Yeah. So now I will do is I will just quickly uh, terminate this machine. I don't require it anymore. And what we'll do is we'll create a new EC2 machine, but this time we will do bootstrapping. That is, we will not touch to this EC2 machine, we will not log into this machine, and we will make sure that this EC2 machine will have everything that will be required. So, how to do that? Let's go with this again. Next, T2 micro, okay. And the advanced details will provide a bash script. So, bash script start with shebang, bing bash, all right. Then I pass the first command as yum install httpd hyphen y. Second service httpd start. And third I will pass a chk config httpd on. Do you guys know what is this command chk config httpd on? Anyone? So basically chk config http john is a command that will automatic login to the apache server in case your apache server goes down that is your servers your server is set to the shutdown state it is top so whenever you restart the machine this ec2 instance will make sure that your apache server will be also get automatically started that is your application will be got automatically started and then we'll write a file. Let's say this is bootstrapping. We'll write this file in our folder. 
where www.html slash index.html so we are writing a data and then we are installing the apache server all right click on add storage add tags let's give a name linux bootstrapping next configure security go we already have a security group. We will not create again. We'll use the same Linux security group, which will open 80 and 22 port. Review and launch. Select in the key pair and launch instances. So now this machine is getting created and it will take some time to you know create a server and do all the configuration for us So here we go, our AC2 instance is running. And uh, let's just copy the public IP. And if our bash script is correct, whatever the command that we have passed, if it is correct, then it should give us an uh, index.html page. And here you go. This is bootstrapping. So it has configured your EC2 machine. It has configured your server, application server, and it has also created index.html file. Now I have a question. If I create an EMI of this machine, what will happen? Lalit, did you ask yes. something now? Yeah, I asked a question. If I create an AMI of this machine, what will happen? Sorry, repeat again. Okay. If I create an AMI of this machine, I click on action and create an image of this machine. So what will include in that AMI? It will include a bootstrap. It will have all the uh, services which is running on this mailing uh, server, including all the you know the web server configuration, whatever is there, you know, whatever the services you are running on. One is the input which comes out of the box and plus the all the additional uh, custom configuration what we have done. The right. will be included. But next time, whenever I create a machine out of that, that is a replica machine, it will again download all these things. That is, it will use the bash script. Download again all these things, or it will have everything automatically inside the system. It, it, it should have everything. Only thing is, we should you know, restart the services, I think, once we you know, instantiate the uh, machines. Okay. So basically, first of all, whenever you create an AMI of this machine, it will include all the data. Because AMI captures the data which is written to the disk. So when we have installed the Apache server and when we have installed this index.html page, it has written the data to the EBS volume. So this data is already a part of that AMI. So it will not use this bash skip to run the command again. Now again, you don't need to again connect to this machine and start the service. The reason is In our user data, we have passed this command chk config httpd on. So this configuration file will make sure the next time whenever a server is restarted, it will automatically have that server started for us. So you don't need to configure it again. This changes is already written in your Apache configuration. So if you take an AMI of this machine and if you uh, you know run an EC2 machine out uh, out of that AMI, you can test it out. You don't require to pass any commands. It will automatically start the server for you.
all right any question any doubt in this part now moving ahead in the instance setting we have changed termination protection that is if it belongs to your production server then you need to must include this future that is when i click here if i click on yes enable now this time i won't be able to terminate this machine if i go to instance state and try to terminate i don't have that option to terminate this machine this says are you sure you want to terminate this ec2 machine if you want to do then you need to disable that permission so technically you are not allowed to do this this helps you from accelerated deletion of your any server by any person in your team now in case if you want to genuinely delete the server again you need to click on action go to the instance setting and then you need to change the permission termination protection again and you, then you need to disable this feature first once it is disabled now you can click on terminate now it gives me permission to terminate the server all right so till now we have seen how to create a ec2 machine how you can con connect to this ec2 machine different kinds of machine from a linux machine from a windows machine connecting from a windows machine to another windows machine or from a windows machine to a linux machine and similarly vice versa from linux to linux or mac to linux then we have seen how to you can configure each of this machine how you can create an ami that is for the replication purposes how you can share your ami with other aws account or you can replicate it to another region so that if you want to create an infrastructure in two regions you can use it and then we have seen the im role and certain basics of ec2 section any doubt any uh, the you know anything you have doubt in this part uh, creating ec2 inst instance so we are using which is already available here my uh, in the uh, console how we uh, use our own image for example hmm? No, there is, which is already available EC2 instance, we create a snapshot and use the image. First, you create the custom one, then we show how to give one. And you're asking outside images. Yes, that's what I'm For example, I want to use uh, uh, some uh, analyzer for some uh, ticket analyzer. There is separate uh, image to install in the way. So, how the image can okay. be installed? The question is like, if you have your custom AMI or custom image on your local machine on your local system and which you want to import on the AWS, how you can do that? Yes. Yes. So there is a service called VM import available. Using this VM import, you can import any images you want. It's a VDT image. You can import any images you want. It can support VDT image. It can support IOSO image. You can upload your images on AWS and you can design your institute instance. We can store it in our uh, uh, root account also, right? Yes, in yes, our can account. Yes. And also, Lalit, uh, whatever the snapshots and the KMIs which is uh, uh, available in the account, uh, can, we, can we take a backup in the local machine? Yes, you can download this again with the VM export, VM import export. You can export your this snapshot to your local machine. Okay. So now once you are done with this AMI, you click on actions and you can deregister this AMI. So that we will not get charged for the extra 8 GB of storage for our snapshot. Click on action and delete the snapshot. All right, so it's uh, 12. Let's take a 10 15 minutes of break and then we'll connect again. All right, and now we'll see an EFS section.
हेलो Hello, now can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. All right. So do you have any questions in doubt regarding our EC2 section? Creation of machines and configuring this machine and etc. Anything? All right, let me know if you have. Uh, we are starting our new topic EBS that is plastic block storage. Now, the machine that you use to connect or you use to spin off in an EC2 section requires to boot a machine that requires an SSD storage. Now, this storage is nothing but an EBS volume. AWS offers you various kind of storage system an S3, EBS, EFS, Glacier. There are lots of kinds of storage volumes available. But EBS is the only one storage that you can use to boot your EC2 machine. Rest of the storage you can use to configure your objects to use your for storage as a storage option for your application. But the EBS volume you can use for storing of your object 
plus for booting up your EC2 machine. So Amazon EBS provides you persistent block storage volumes for use with Amazon EC2 instance in the AWS cloud. First of all, it's a persistent storage system, which means once the data is written into this device, it's a permanent storage of your data. It's not an ephemeral storage, it's a persistent data storage. Each EBS volume is automatically replicated within its ability zone. Now, this is the future of AWS. That's why it gives you 99.99% of ability guarantee that whenever you create an EBS volume and whenever you insert any data in this volume, that data and that volume will be automatically replicated within its ability zone. This replicated data will not be accessible to the AWS and you also cannot access to this data. This data is highly protected and is only used in case of component failure from Amazon side. If the data center uh, is compromised, the ability zone goes down or there is a failure with the EBS storage, in that case only, that replicated copy will be used. Apart from that, no, uh, neither the AWS can use this storage, the data that you have stored on this data, uh, on this volume to use it, or neither you can use this data. It can be only used for restoring of data in case of component failure. It's a consistent and low latency performance wise volume storage. Now there are two types of volumes we have seen in our EC2 section. One that is the EBS, which is a persistent storage system on which whenever you write a data that is actually written on your disk. Whereas there is a non persistent storage system, which is called as instant store. This instant store is the ephemeral storage of your volume. The volume persists, the data persists till the system is running. Once you stop the machine, your data is no longer available. It's just a temporary storage of your data. So persistent storage, volume persists independent of Amazon EC2. As long as your EC2 instance is running, your volume will be independently available for your EC2 machine. Volume termination protection, again, just like your EC2 instance deletion protection. Similarly to your volume, we have a termination protection again here. Now you can select your storage capacity, storage size based on your compute, based on your application. The number of storage that you will require, the type of storage you will require. You can take one of the storage type and you can specify the number of GPs of data that you will require for your application. The best part of this is you can detach and attach between instances within the CMLD zone, which means if we have more uh, more than two EC2 instances in your same ability zone, then you can detach and attach the volumes to any of this EC2 machine. Which means, let's say you have an EC2 machine and you have an EBS volume. You have attached this EBS volume to this EC2 machine. You have written some data into this EBS volume. Let's say in our case, index.html file or any video file, anything that you have uploaded in this EBS volume. Now you can have another EC2 machine and you can connect to this EBS volume, the one which is already being created and it is used by EC2 instance one. But to do that, you need to first detach this communication from EC2 instance one to the EBS volume and then you can associate it to another. So an EBS volume can be associated to multiple EC2 instance but not at the same time. You can associate multiple EBS volume to a single EC2 instance at a time only. A single EC2 instance, whereas can have multiple EBS volume. A single EC2 instance can have multiple EBS volume. You can attach multiple EBS volume at the same time. But one EBS volume cannot be associated to multiple EC2 instance at the same time. Did you get the difference? One EC2 instance can have multiple EBS volumes at the same time. But one EBS volume cannot be associated to multiple EC2 instances at the same time. Yes, guys, did you get the difference between two, these two sentences? 
Yeah. Okay. Now, one instance can have multiple volumes attached, and the best practice says you should have separate boot and data volumes. That is, for booting up your EC2 machines for configuring in your application, you should have separate uh, volume for that. And whatever the application you are residing, whatever the data that you require to for the communication with your application, that should be on separate volume. That's the best practice. So you have one EC2 instance and you have one and multiple EBS volume. So one can be treated as for the booting purpose and other can be used for the data purposes. But the only condition is the EBS volume and the EC2 machine should be in same ability zone. It cannot go beyond the ability zone. Reason, because this block storage is a physical storage of your data. On the Amazon hardware, you are creating an EBS volume. You are consuming a physical storage of the data. So it cannot be used for multi-regional purposes. You need to copy that data to another empty zone and then you can use it. But a single machine can be only accessible to that particular region only, to that particular ability zone only. Now there are different kinds of volumes available. There are SST volumes and there are HTT volumes. And in SST volume, there are two types of volume available. There is general purpose SST, provision IOPS SST, and it's HTT. Again, there are two types available, throughput optimized HTT and call HTT. There is also one more category available called as magnetic storage. This magnetic storage are just like our magnetic days, which has a very low cost, but at the same time, it gives you a very low performance. So it's not at all recommended. Now, on these two categories, SSD and HTT, SSD is can be only used for booting up your EC2 machine. HTT cannot be used to boot your EC2 machine. HTT can only be used to store your data, whereas SSD can be used to boot your EC2 machine. So what exactly this SSD are? What are the features? Let's see. In SSD, we have first general purpose SSD. That is the logical name is GP2. SSD volumes that gives you balance, price, and performance in the variety of workloads. So for your normal workloads, you can go with a general purpose SSD and you can design your infrastructure. It's mostly suitable for most of the workloads, system boot up volume, uh, driving the virtual desktop, low latency interactive applications, development and test environments. For these all purposes, you can go with a general purpose SSD. The volume that you can create a single volume is minimum one GB to maximum up to 16 terabytes. You can range anything. Whatever your size is, you can specify the size and you can have it. Now, AWS also features you that you can easily modify whenever you want. For example, currently you have 10 GB of storage. Tomorrow you will require more data. So you can expand your storage to 20 GB to 25 GB when number of GBs you want. But the condition here is you can easily expand your storage from 10 to 20 to 20 to 40, but you cannot decrease the size. This is called vertical scaling in this vertical scaling aws cannot decrease the size amazon can only increase the size of your volume so it is not at all recommended that you should go for a vertical scaling what you can do is you can go for a horizontal scaling that is you can attach multiple volumes 10 gb plus 10 gb plus 10 gb whatever the number of gbs of data you want you can add multiple volume to that ec2 machine it's called horizontal scaling, which is the best practices to follow. What will happen? Let's say currently your usage is just 100 GB. Tomorrow your business expand, you will require more GPs of data. So you create another volume of 100 GB and attach to your system. So now you have 100 plus 100, 200 GPs of data. Let's say after six months, you don't require that 100 GPs of data. You have migrated your infrastructure to another you know place or uh, your business is not working whatever the thing is you don't require that extra 100 gp of data so in that case you can easily delete that volume and you will not get charged for that but if you increase or if you scale vertically you don't have any other option 
than paying for that 200 GPs of data. So again, the best practices says you should grow horizontally, not vertically. All right. Next is provision IOP as SSD, which gives you more interaction with your database. If you are uh, with your you know storage, so if you are having a large database size of volume which is available on your EC2 machine or in your EPS volume, and you can go with provision IOPS SSD for a high interaction of your volume storage, you can go with provision IOPS, which offers you minimum 4 GB to maximum up to 16 terabytes of your data. Then we have HDD. Now we know that HDD cannot be used for booting up an EC2 machine. It can be only used for storing the data for interacting with our application. So the first is throughput optimized HDD, which for users you low cost HDD volume designed for frequently accessed data. Now the difference between throughput and cold HDD is throughput can be used for frequently accessing data. If you are having a data which you are continuously interacting, you can go with this kind of storage. Cold HDD whereas is used for infrequent access data. When you are accessing your data very rarely, once in a week, once in a month, like rarely, but you will require a continuous integration with your application. At that time, you can go with the core HTT. Like examples, you can see here for streaming purposes, for big data, data warehousing, log processing. For these all purposes, you can go with HTT types of volume. Now, the size starts from minimum 500 GB. As we are dealing with a high storage of data, so the minimum storage starts for 500 GB to maximum up to 16 terabytes. So these are the conditions, and these are the four different types of EBS volumes that you can create on AWS. Now again, AWS is not yet sufficient for its services. There are a lot of services, there are a lot of benefits that AWS offers you. One of them is snapshot. Just imagine you have a data on your on-premise infrastructure, which you want to take a backup. It becomes very difficult to take a backup of your data and store on the server or store on a place where again, you need to protect the data. So you need to you know, keep uh, interacting with your data. You need to keep protecting your data. With Amazon EBS, you have a single click to, get, to take a snapshot of your data, which you can store it any way you want. The offers, it offers you that first of all point in time recovery. From the end number of snapshots, you can recover your data to any point of time. The second best feature is it supports incremental snapshot. Now incremental snapshot is really very amazing service. How it helps you is let's understand one scenario. You have 10 GB of your data. All right, you have 10 GB of your volume and all this 10 GB of data, you have taken a snapshot. Now snapshots are generally stored on S3. So this 10 GB of data is now get stored on the S3 bucket. That is a general scenario. Now let's say tomorrow you have, uh, you know, modify certain data in your EBS volume. Let's say scenario two. 2 GB of data is get updated from the existing 10 GB of your data. So after this 10 GB of volume, 2 GB is now updated data. So if you try to take a snapshot of this volume, what will happen? Snapshot B will be created, but in the snapshot B, the starting 8 GB of data will be referred from snapshot A. And 2 GB of updated data will be passed from the EBS volume. That is only the delta change that happened from snapshot A to snapshot B will be only stored on snapshot B. So in this case, how much storage you need to pay? For a snapshot A, you need to pay for 10 GB of storage, but for snapshot B, you will only pay 2 GB of the data. So total you need to pay only for 12 GB. If you do not have any incremental snapshot or incremental backup strategy, then the amount of storage that you need to pay here is 10 plus 10, 20 GB of data. So instead of paying 20 GB of data, now here you are paying only for 12 GB of your data, which is called as incremental snapshot. 
Now, what if I delete snapshot A? Out of this 10 GB, what if I delete a snapshot A? What will happen then? So before that, let's understand the scenario three. You have additional, you have added two more GBs of data. That is, you have vertically scaled that, uh, you know, previous volume and now 10 plus 2, 12 GB of data you have. The 10 plus 2, 12 GB of data you have and you have taken snapshot C. So what will happen in this snapshot C? First 8 GB of data will be referred from snapshot A. Second 8 GB, 2 GB of data will be referred from the snapshot B and the 2 GB of additional data will be captured in the snapshot C. So instead of paying for 10 plus 10 plus 10, 30 GB, here you are only paying for 14 GB of data. 10 plus 2 plus 2. It's really very good. Now let's say I have deleted snapshot A. Now how is going to affect the entire system? Can you guess? Anyone? What if I delete the snapshot A? Hello? Anyone? Can you hear me? Uh, sorry, pardon? Okay. So basically what will happen? Whatever the 8 GB of data is present on the snapshot A, that 8 GB of data will be moved to the snapshot B. And then it will delete the snapshot A. So in that case here you will pay for 10 GB of snapshot B and 2 GB of snapshot C. What if the data, what is the snapshot that you will delete? What if the dependencies that other uh, future snapshot will have? The data will be migrated to that particular point. So in this way, incremental backups helps to, you know, uh, for the cost optimization purposes. Any question in doubt in this part? EBS? Four types where we can use this EBS volume in our EC2 machine, right? Let me know if you have any. Yes, pardon? Yeah, this. Uh, uh, sorry, my voice is breaking. Hi, your voice is breaking. Can you pardon? Hello, your voice is breaking. Can you repeat one? Hello? 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 Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. When I delete the snapshot, uh, the migration from uh, one snapshot to the, uh, the snapshot is automatic, right? Yeah, this is, will be automatic. Transferring okay. of data from snapshot A to snapshot will, will be done automatically by the AWS. It will take care okay. by the AWS itself. All right. Yes. Now the next point is encryption. That is, you can encrypt your snapshot. If it is automatically encrypted, that is by creation of the snapshot, if you have encrypted that part, you can re-encrypt. If you have an unencrypted snapshot, then also you can encrypt it with the copy process, just like our AMI. While do having a copying of AMI, the same way you can copy and create a encrypted snapshot data of your volume. So let's see the demo. So quickly, what we'll do is we'll first create two EC2 machine in the same region, in the same ability zone. So am I in North Virginia? And here I click on launch instances and let's go with the same. 
and here I will select two. I need to create two EC2 machines and I will prefer the subnet as US East 1A that is common to both the EC2 machine so that we are in the same hybrid zone. Keeping everything default and clicking on air storage, air tags, that's called server. Security Gov, we already have a Linux Security Gov, we'll use the same. Review and launch. So I will just change the name. I will make it server 1 and server 2 so that we can easily identify. Now this is in US East 1A and the same this is also in US East 1A. So we have 1 and 2. Let's go to the volume section and here we have already the 88 GB of two volumes which we have just created our EC2 machine. These are those volumes, 88 GB is our volume and you can see the same name here, server. Let's create another volume of 10 GB. And here you can specify what install volume type you want. General purpose, provision, IPS, quality, throughput or magnetic one. Whatever you want, you can go with that. Again, I will choose the US each one because our EC2 machines are in US each one. I will select that. Now, if you have any snapshots, that is a data of your volume, a snapshot of your volume, and if you want to copy that data, you can specify the snapshot ID here, and the data will be copied in this volume, the newly created volume. And you can have a size for minimum 1 GB to maximum to 16 terabytes. Okay, what is the text that you want to give? You can give. Let's say additional volume. Click on create volume. So now this 10 GB of additional volume is creating. And it's now in available state. Right. So let's go once again to the instances. And we'll click on the server one. Now if I just scroll back a little down here. In the block devices, you will find here only one volume available. That is the 8 GB which we use to create our EC2 machine. Dev slash XVDF. The thing you will find for the server 2. Only one GB, only one block is connected. Now what we will do is, we will connect this volume, the one that we have additionally created. We click on action. We click on attach volume. And you select an instance. And this time we'll select the server one. All right. We create. Uh, we pass the instance ID here, and then click on attach. So once we do attachment, if I go back to the instances, select the server, and if I scroll back, now if I have two devices attached, one is XVDA, the one which comes with the 8 GP, and second the 10 GP of data which we have just recently connected. And to our second server, we have only still one available. Correct. So what I do, I just copy the public IP and I go to the terminal. Now in this part, you will require to have a basic information about the Linux, how you, you not know, travel to the Linux terminals and etc. I need to first connect to my machine. So I'll go SSH hyphen I. Do sudo so for a root user, and then the first command to check whether the block storage is connected to your system or not is lsblk. When you pass this command, here you will find you have xvda with 8 GB of storage, and there is another volume attached of 10 GB of storage. Now, what I will do is I will create one more terminal and I will connect to another EC2 machine. That is server 2 so that we can identify easily. So, on my second EC2 instance, that is server 2, if I pass lsplk, 
is do, do not have any 10 GB of storage, which have only 8 GB of default storage system. And to our first EC2 machine, we have 8 GB plus 10 GB of data. Now here we need to look into the picture that is that 8 GB of volume is already mounted and we are using this system. But this 10 GB is not mounted. So we need to mount this directly to our EC2 machine so that we can use it and write our data. But as this is a newly created EC2 machine, we need to first make a file system and we need to format this file system. So how to do that? Is you pass the command make file system mkfs hyphen t and whatever the extension you want to use, like most of the Linux devices are supported with ext4 based extension. So I will use the same. If you are having a Windows system, then you can go with the NTFS, FAT32, etc. And I provide the location that is dev slash xvdf. This is the name of your device that you need to pass xvdf slash df slash xvdf and you hit enter. And it is formatting your system. Now your volume has been formatted for the first time. Second step that you need to do is you need to create a directory. That is, you need to create a folder. So make directory and give a folder name. Let's call as test one. Now to this directory, we will mount our newly created EBS volume. So the command is mount slash location svdf and then name of your folder. That's it. You hit enter. And now to write a data into this volume, what you need to do is simply cd test and you are inside your EBS volume. And currently there is no data available that is lost and found. There is no file available. Let's do one thing. Let's write some data. VI. VI is just an editor tool. Text dot let's just create a random file insert some data all right any random data now i'm writing this file okay let's just come out of this file system and if i see lsplk now i have mounted this directly 10 gb of data to the test file right so are you okay with this part any question till now how you do? Are you trying at the same time? It looks fine now, right? Hello? Sorry? Yeah, it looks fine. Looks fine. Are you trying at the same time? Yes. Yeah. Actually, this one is not for the APS. We need it for the AC to go on the server. All right. All right. So, no issues. So, once this system is mounted now if you want to attach this volume to another ec2 instance that is to your server 2 you need to first unmount this directory just like our pen drive whenever we attach to one system and then we want to copy to another system what we do is we detach this volume from our system then we remove our pen drive and attach it to another ec2 another system similarly we need to unmount this directory the command is u mount iPhone D slash TF slash XVDF. And if I check now whether this amount is successful or not, then you see the amount directly has been removed. But it's still available. The tan GB is still available, but I cannot use it. So now what you need to do in case if you want to attach this tan GB to another system is you go to the volume section, select the additional volume. Click on action to detach this volume. And once again, the volume comes into in uh, available state. Now it's an available state. You click on action, you click on attach volume. And now this time you select the server two. Make sure you always do mounting and unmounting properly. If you do without unmounting your EC2 machine, there might be a case that you will lose your data. And then you click on attach. 
so now if i jump to my second ec2 machine here as you can currently see that the previously when we passed this command lsplk we had only 8 gb of data and if i do now i have 8 plus 10 gb of data but still the mount point is missing but this time we don't need to create any file system the file system is only created once when you have a newly created volume or in case if you want to format a volume at that time only you need to create a file system but the next time configuration you don't need to do if you do then your data will be lost so what i do is directly i create a directory this time let's say test2 and then i mount my directory slash t slash 3dm to test2 so when i enter now into the test2 and i see the files i have the file that i have created in my first ec2 machine it is any random data that i have passed in this file so in this way you can use a common EBS volume to share your data in multiple EC2 instances within the same ability zone. All right. Now same you can do on this EBS volume, the volume that you have created, you can click on action, you can modify that volume. That is now you with you have already created 10 GP of volume, or you can go with 11 GP of volume. You can add a number of sizes here, but you cannot go with the 9 GP. The size of volume can be only increased, not decrease. You cannot decrease the size, you can always increase the size of the volume. You click on modify and the volume size will be modified. You can also create a snapshot of this volume. On this data that is text.txt snapshot will be taken. Click on create snapshot, define any name here, and then you click on create snapshot. Snapshot will, uh, will be created. Now this snapshot, if you want to migrate to another ability zone or another region, then again, you can do with the same feature. You will find a snapshot in this snapshot section. Again, you can just copy the snapshot to wherever you want. All right, any question, any doubt in this part? This is the EBS volume. Now, can you just tell me any, uh, you know, restrictions or any limitation with this EBS volume? We cannot be mapped to, to instance uh, Sorry, pardon? It cannot be uh, mounted to two instances simultaneously. Exactly, it cannot be mounted to two instances at the same time. Any other? No, once you like the storage, no, you cannot. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, of course. So, the, to the base of my knowledge, first of all, you cannot attach a single volume to multiple EC2 instances at the same time. Second, when you have an EBS volume, it can be associated to a system within the CMIability zone. That is, you need to create a multiple EBS volume if you want to expand your infrastructure, if you want to copy your data. The third is like, if more devices are connected to a single EC2 machine, then the workload increases. So you need to maintain that part. And next is like, you can only increase the size of a existing volume. You cannot decrease the size of that volume can grow horizontally of course the number of uh, EBS volume that you want but for a single EC2 for a single EBS volume you cannot upgrade the size that's all the limitations not to override all these limitations to override all these things we have a system called as EFS elastic file system and elastic file system is a network based file system on which you can have a common data that can be shared across the already zone in multiple EC2 instances. But again, you cannot use this volume to boot your system. 
for booting up your machine you only have one volume called as EBS. EFS can be only used to share your data across multiple ability zone across multiple EC2 machine at the same time. All right, we'll see that part. Let me know if you have any doubt or any question regarding this EBS volume. We will discuss that first. Uh, how long is going to take to complete that? Uh, the EFS part? Yes. Uh, it will take uh, at least 15 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, do you want me to do it uh, in the letter section after 2? Because it's already 1 pm. So, can we do it on 12 or uh, 2 pm when we start our new session? At the time, we can continue this part. Okay. Yeah, yeah that looks good. Yeah. Okay, so you can try yeah. the CBS volume. If you have any doubts, if you are having any uh, kind of connection issues, let me know. Again, we we connect back. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Then. So let us just log off this meeting, and probably we have a different meeting, uh, different meeting for the next session. So I will talk to the Shashank or Saurabh. And he will share it with you if there is any change in the link. Okay. All right. See you after one half. Yeah.